Yeah, good afternoon. So let us uh, continue uh, with uh, where I left. I think you know this uh, certification. I think uh, based upon the PPTs, the students. I think you can take a clean look on those things, and then I think if you study that carefully, you will understand where all the problems are. and this is an important area for example if you look now when you go for even placements like a jp morgan or morgan stanley kind of a thing they are all interested in trying to see how you can overview give a review of the code which is secure kind of a framework so all those it will enable you very nicely and ultimately you will be able to build systems kind of a framework so with that let me start i think uh, i will not spend much time here so i will give you the idea basically uh, you know in concurrency and synchronization one of the main things of communication is the semaphore so if you see the semaphore it is technically a global one which is shared by all the processes so whenever you have a semaphore in some sense whichever uses the semaphore it will have an impact on all the processes which share this is semaphore yes for example in the procedure uh, what you see here uh, uh, here i have a simple procedure uh, you can treat it as if it is even a process one of the reasons why i have called it a procedure will become clear in the next slide and this says this is a it takes as input x an integer class that is given by integer class x and then you have a semaphore class which is Uh, a function in some sense of the class that is related to the semaphore as well as the integer class x and now what does that say p if x equal to 1 then you are going to signal yes that means that uh, now this can be reduced that is i can do a p of s uh, p and v are the operations that are allowed on a semaphore and that is what this one is procedure p and now if you see procedure q what does that say y is an integer class of s yes and y that is the variable that is shared here and similarly the semaphore class is of variable s yes, comma y so this is a signal and this is a point where it is going to wait for s and that is where you have only this class which is not dependent upon the uh, semaphore kind of a framework so now if you begin so initially the local one i set uh, y equal to 0 and wait for s to become Uh, equal to one. That means x becomes equal to one, and then I will set y equal to one, and then that is the end of this procedure. So yeah, so this is what uh, it is. And now if you look, the concurrent execution of these procedures ca causes an implicit flow of information from parameter x of the procedure p to parameter y of q over the synchronization channel associated with the semaphore. Yes. For example, here. even though i didn't mention uh, here as yes, a, a function of y what does that mean this semaphore uh, passes the value of x implicitly to uh, the variable y so that is the flow of information you are having to keep track of it if you want to see that the program is secure kind of a framework so for example if x equal to 0 y will be set to 0 that is if x equal to 0 y is set to 0 and then q is delayed indefinitely because this is another process a q it is going to wait uh, uh, for yes when does that wait only when the signal has happens that means that at that point x equal to 1 then i am able to uh, do a, a v operator the p operation on yes and then go for that kind of a framework and now if x equal to 1 q the i am going to signal the uh, procedure q and then it can proceed because s has uh, uh, now uh, uh, taken the value 1 and then it can proceed and then y gets set to 1 so thus what it would mean is that if p and q are invoked concurrently i can treat as if the first procedure uh, p which is a Uh, can be parameterized as and two values which is a comma s and similarly q you can say it is another one its own local variable let us consider that as a, a, a actual parameter b comma s so it's essentially a two process that is p of a of s in parallel with q of b of s 
and the value of uh, argument A that flows into argument B. So, from this argument, now if I bind, because this is a procedure declaration, now if I am going to say A is uh, going to be bound to X and Y, B is going to be bound to Y, now I can say the argument, the uh, value of the argument A can flow into argument uh, B. So, thus flow of X into Y is caused by weight of S and signal of S which are the operations that are available on the semaphore S. Yes, yes uh, in a sense, if you are aware of the P and V semaphores, P sh you should not confuse with the procedure P what I have given there. It essentially means uh, signal corresponds to capital V of S where capital V is the operation that is allowed on the semaphore and weight in some sense corresponds to the a P operation capital P not the operation what you have because the semantics of this P and V semaphores are corresponding to the weight S and signal S, the semantics is as follows. Now, when do you read, you can say wait for S to become greater than 0. Once it becomes greater than 0, S equal to S minus 1, that means that process has acquired, nobody else can acquire till it releases, which is given by S equal to 1. So, before acquiring, some process it gets uh, makes S equal to S minus 1 being a binary semaphore no other process will be able to do that. That means that mutual exclusion is achieved by these uh, uh, processes uh, through the operations of P and V on the semaphore. Therefore, now execution of the if statement in P causes an implicit flow from X to S. What is that? Now, if you have if X equal to 1 then it is signal of S. If X equal to 0, that means that I am not going to be signaling a kind of a, a framework or the other. So, what does that mean? That the execution of the if statement in P causes an implicit flow of the value of X to the semaphore S yes, causing the value of X into a Q because S is common to both P and Q procedures. So, now when X equal to 0, that means that when you have X equal to 0, what does that happen? So, if x equal to 0, q is left waiting on semaphore s yes, because there is no way a signal s yes is going to come into the a picture. So, because this is similar to a non-terminating while loop because here if the signal does not come, this process, uh, this procedure terminates and now this waits forever, uh, this will never happen and so that is how this one is called a non-terminating uh, while loop. Technically, we might wonder if all synchronization channels are also associated with abnormal terminations from timeout. That means that the question that arises is whenever there is no uh, uh, exception, then you have an abnormal termination and also when you say timeout, that means that this process is preempted in T seconds kind of a framework. So, now what it would essentially mean is that it is essentially one bit of information that goes that is whether x equal to 1 or x equal to 0, that is how it is 1 bit and so the, that is how it is in the context of the uh, channels, channel capacity, uh, it essentially corresponds to 1 bit. However, the information can flow along the synchronization channels even when the uh, procedure terminate normally. What does that mean? It is uh, do not worry about abnormal termination or timeout. When the synchronization is happening, the information can flow from uh, A to B because of the synchronization which is happening uh, through the uh, semaphore, yes. So, now you consider another uh, program. These are all uh, concocted programs which variations show what are all the issues that are going to be uh, worried about. So, this is again a, a procedure, this is again a, a procedure for copying X to X. Now, in the first one declaration in the copy of 3, I declare the main declarations which is essentially I declare two semaphores S0 and S1, S0 is of class X and similarly S1 is also of class X. Now, I will have two processes similar to uh, P of A of S and Q of A, B of S, I constructed in this manner, this is the process 1. Here, I am going to say if x equal to 0, then signal of s is 0, that means this semaphore becomes enabled, otherwise you signal s1. That means if x equal to 0 is signal s0, otherwise you are going to signal s1. So, now here in the process 2, what happens? I am waiting for s0, that means 
I am wait for signal on the semaphore yes not and if and I will set y equal to 1 then I am going to say a signal yes 1. So that means after I do that after I uh, get the uh, first uh, semaphore, then I will say signal of S1 and in process S3, there is a signal S1. So either when X equal to, when X is not equal to 0, the process one also come directly here or when it has entered process 2, after S sub 0, Y equal to 1, it can get into signal S1 and, the, and does that. So what does that mean? When, when X equal to 0, then process 2 executes, that is process 2 executes before process C, so that the final value of Y is 0, that means it comes here. When, when X is not equal to 0, that means it comes to a signaling S1, that means it comes, the process 3 will be enabled, process 3 execute before process 2, so the final value is given by Y equal to 1. Hence, if X is initially 0 or 1, execution of copy 3 sets Y to the value of X. So, what it means, now by using a concurrent program, our task was to copy from X to Y that has been done through this kind of a, a structure. So, there we can analyze what is the uh, information flow or not. So, now because each statement logically following a weight of S is operation is conditioned on a signal S yes operation there is an implicit flow from the semaphore S yes to every variable that is the target of an assignment in a statement that is logically a following the weight. For example, whatever that follows Y1, it is based upon this value of S naught of S of X is being implicitly uh, flowing through uh, this variable. To ensure the security of these flows, we require the class of every such variable Y to satisfy the relation that the level of the class of say, uh, a semaphore S yes bar must be less than or equal to the a class of Y bar. And similarly, instead of semaphore is also a global variable, you can also consider whether they are just uh, uh, the uh, 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 global variables, which means that this is another copy for, this is again another program, what it would say is that copy of X to Y. And now here we naturally require the condition because you have E naught is equal to E1 and that is equal to true, E naught must be less than or equal to Y and E1 must be less than or equal to Y. That is the condition that is going to be enforced if you look at the whole program. So here what is happening E naught and E1 are playing the role of the semaphores S naught and S1. So this is another one which shows now the semaphore which was implicitly global, here I am declared that as a, a explicitly global variables, I am almost simulating exactly the same thing like while E naught equal to 0, which essentially say, saying that I am going to wait for this value to become 0, similar to what we said uh, like a weight of S1 uh, kind of a, a framework or the other. So that means that a signal process can covertly leak a value by making the delay proportional to the loop. So, what does that mean? Now, if you are going to implicitly, somebody is going to infer whether the signaling process is uh, trying to give some information which is called a leak by saying how long I am going to be there proportional to the loop and similar problem also can be realized in the context of loops kind of a, a framework. And so, now similar to, now you come to abnormal termination, that means that when an exception happens like a, a index overflow in an array or in the context of a divide exception, all these things come into the procedure. So, here you have a copy phi, x is of integer class and y is of again integer class and insecure procedure that leaks x to y. For example, initially y was equal to 0, which is the output variable to which the value should come, while x equal to 0, uh, go on skipping and uh, whereas uh, and then uh, while x equal to 0 do nothing and then finally if a x is not equal to 0 set y equal to 1. So now what happens here if y equal to 0 then y becomes naturally 0 and the procedure hangs in the loop uh, uh, here because it is happening y equal to 0. Now whereas if x equal to 1 then y becomes 1 and the procedure terminates. So here is something which is a part non-terminating part under some condition it terminates. So that means that there is a flow of value x going to y as y equal to 1 is conditioned on x 
thus there is a flow even though uh, that is not the a target. That means that if they are not targeted this one, these are all called the covered channels and that is how they are all called the loops. So, whenever you have non-termination, you have to worry about these channels. Such covered channels are ne not necessarily confined to non-terminating loops and there are various variations kind of a framework. For example, if you in the context of the a while statement what we have like while x equal to 0 do skip. So, now if we replace that statement by if x equal to 0 then x equal to 1 upon x, there is a possibility of a, a divide exception. So, now the value of x can still be deduced uh, from y because if x equal to 0, the procedure abnormally terminates with a divide by 0 exception that is a possibility when x gets the value 0 because x equal to 0 and now you are going to divide 1 over 0 and then it means it is a divide exception kind of a framework and y equal to 0 if x equal to 1 the procedure terminates normally with y equal to 1. Indeed, now what you can summarize is the non-terminating while statement could be replaced by any action that causes abnormal program termination similar to uh, you can call that is it a end of file while reading a file or when you are uh, looking at a, a array you can say subscript is out of range if you say the array is of 1 to n now n uh, suppose you increase after uh, uh, i attains the value n n equal to n plus, uh, i equal to i plus 1 then it goes out of range that is it accesses a memory location which it is not supposed to be accessing. That means the leak occurs even without the assignments to y because the value of x can be determined by whether the a procedure terminates normally or not. For example, here if x equal to 0 non-termination that means that the assignment to y has not happened or uh, that would have happened kind of a framework can be inferred from the program because if x equal to 0 if you replace an exception has happened and so that is how y remains equal to uh, 0 kind of a framework. So, now here in the copy 6 program what is the thing what one is doing we are doing it that as a simple z equal to x which means that I am going to going on adding the value sum equal to sum plus x y equal to y plus 1 as long as z equal to 0. If z equal to 0 and then you have y going on increasing uh, sum plus x kind of a framework. So, now what does that mean? It uh, loops until the variable sum overflows. Now, procedure then terminates and then x can be approximated by max over divided by y where max is the lar largest possible integer that can be held in a register. The program trap classes a flow x going to x flowing to y because execution of the assignment is conditioned on the value of the sum and thus x and but note that we do not require uh, that x must be less than or equal to y. So, the problem of abnormal termination can be handled by inhibiting all traps except those for which actions have been explicitly defined in the program which essentially means all those you have captured as exceptions then there is no problem. If you have not captured then it becomes necessary that you are going to do that kind of a, a framework or the other. And so, adding a condition statement you can always say when an overflow occurs sum do z is equal to 1 and were added to the copy six, the security check sum uh, the class of sum must be less than or equal to z must be made and the procedure would be declared as insecure. So, now this gives you the conditions on which you are able to uh, say uh, uh, when can a program uh, be certified kind of a framework. And so, now I will give you a a introduction to the so called readers writer flow model, it overcomes many of the a problems that we encounter. So, now some of these things I will not uh, go uh, because we have done little bit uh, uh, already and so information flow control, it is a sort of a mandatory control for security and important security properties like confidentiality and integrity are essentially information flow properties. If you use this model, the claim is 
you will be secure by design and it is also compositional. That means that if I show some part to be secure, if I join another under the operators that have been defined, then again if you combine these two things, again it will be compositional which in some sense in a, in a very colloquial way it is also called a modular kind of a framework. So, the important thing is that it enables us to address the end to end security guarantees. So, this one all this I have uh, already uh, shown you what is the Bella Padua model, the Denning model kind of a framework and lattice model also you know. So, I do not have to uh, go there kind of a framework or the other and the differences. And now, uh, I will illustrate a couple of examples for which you have to understand what is it what one needs to do. Consider this example, what does that mean? Here you have Bob, that means that I want to compute the tax of a person using a cloud service. So, here Bob submits his uh, a spreadsheet and then sends the tax data to the preparer and then the preparer, preparer prepares the tax and then sends it back to Bob, so that he can submit it to the a tax authorities. So, now what are the confidentiality, privacy a properties that need to be satisfied here. So, what is the thing when Bob sends his income details as a tax data to the preparer, this should be only usable by preparer and it is not supposed to be read by others. So, that means that this information is private to Bob and so now the preparer can only use this data for purposes of computing the tax kind of a framework. So, this is one important property that has to be satisfied. The other one is now if you consider the preparer has his own database, he is an expert let us assume and he can compute the minimum data, minimum tax that is applicable for the tax data that has been submitted by some algorithm what he has constituted a taking into account the loss of the a country or the tax loss of the country kind of a framework. So, naturally if everyone knows what is the way to compute the minimum tax, nobody would go to him. So, which means that even if I submit many of the uh, tax data and then I know what is the thing, I should not be able to learn what is the algorithm through which he is going to compute it kind of a framework. That means that the intermediate computation the algorithm that the uh, tax preparer uh, uses to get the minimum tax or what the optimal tax is that again is something confidentially it cannot be leaked out kind of a framework. So, now when the final forum uh, is uh, given, the final forum is given then he is going to submit it to the uh, tax authorities. What is the thing that one needs to uh, worry about here? What it would mean is that he would submit it to the a tax authorities, but at the same time he wants to indicate this one was prepared by the tax preparer who has certain identity kind of a framework. So, if there was a mistake and the tax authorities will encounter the preparer to say you have computed wrongly and you have not given a proper thing. So, these are all important things what we have to capture in the whole what is called the uh, provenance uh, in the database scenario or any one kind of a framework in, in the context of a forensic kind of a framework. So, these are all the properties that should be satisfied if I apply a security model on this uh, structure. This is one example. So, now let us take another example. So, now you are always uh, you are trying to enforce a data security policy while executing an untrusted code. For example, if you see in this, you normally use the antivirus scanner which is given uh, by this here. You have the antivirus scanner and it is the helper, it on and off, uh, it uh, updates this virus database and it uses a temporary and the scans all the network kind of a framework. This is the update uh, daemon and this is the user and then finally, it is a some information uh, to the outside uh, world kind of a framework. So, what is the thing that needs to be observed is that how are you sure that the antivirus scanner when it finds out there is a problem, it is sending only that information, 
it could be the case that some sensitive information on your laptop or a notebook could also have been sent. Is there a way that we can say that this cannot go out of my laptop or notebook come what may that means that this remains completely private he cannot do that and so what would be the thing what one would look for if I am able to put a small wrapper for which I should be able to show that this exactly does what I want and now then it should be possible for me to do that. That means that unless I authorize no information can go. This is another scenario what I would like to get it on such a, a system. And similarly you can encounter many of the conference systems are to say that it should not be the case you submit a paper find some ghost reviewers and then they submit the ghost reviewer uh, accept 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 and then doing that that kind of a this one as well as all the independent reviewers must be really independent otherwise they can come together either to make the paper accept or I make the paper reject and all these things should be avoided when we build conference system that is what it means by this is a real secure conference system kind of a framework. So for this one of the first model that was proposed was what called a decentralized label model by Myers and Liskow. Barbara Liskow uh, in 2000 you know Barbara Liskow is one of a eminent computing scientist who also was the winner of the Turing Award, she is from MIT and then they introduced a notion of what is called a declassification so that there is no need of a always a completely a centralized system what we have studied so far including the lattice flow, the BLP that is the Bella Padua model and the Biba model a kind of a, a framework or the other. To informally uh, to tell you what is the notion of a declassification. For example, uh, consider a case in which uh, you are to change the password. So in a system or in your computer system, when you are asked to change the uh, password, what does that say? It asks uh, for your old password and then it asks you to give a new password and just for to say that you would not have made a mistake, it may even ask you uh, to repeat the same uh, new password what you want to select. And then uh, the root which is a, a super user takes these things and makes the updates in the slash etc password or wherever that one needs to be done. And but now do you, uh, you do not know whether it has stay, whether the system has taken the new password or whether you have to uh, remember the old password because you would be confused later when you are asked which password to give kind of a framework. Whereas however, because it the information has flown into a, a super user who is at a higher level than you then it means the uh, information has already at a higher level naturally information cannot flow down because this is a confidential information. But however uh, the if I do not get any information I do not know which password I should give when I am going to log in next time after I log out of the system uh, now. So then that is where you have to uh, make some kind of a, a, a information to say that now the super user without leaking the information uh, endangering the user I should be able to tell okay uh, I am not going to tell the whole sequence of operations or the whole information. I, I will tell you that the password has been updated. So which essentially means now you can use the new password and you can record it or you remember it and forget about the old password. And so now this is called a declassification. Why is it called a declassification and often also called the downgrading because the information has already reached a higher level. Now it has to be uh, flowing down and then you are going to be very, be, uh, very, very discreet in trying to say that how much of this information I am leaking out so that the whole confidentiality of the security policy is not going to be at risk. So that is how this one is called declassification or some or it is also called downgrading. And so now let me uh, the basis of this is the use of a labels. What does that mean by a label? Now let us say all data are labeled. That means that 
uh, let us say you have a data set uh, which is called blue and something else is called a pink and there is another data set which is a combination of pink and blue and now this process uh, has to use both the pink information as well as the blue information whereas file B is composed of only pink information and this is called only blue information. Now the process interacts with file A and file B. Now process technically has more information than both file A and file B because it is interacting with respect to both blue and uh, pink. So what does that mean? Information from file A can easily flow to process whereas similarly the pink information can flow to process. However, this process cannot send any information to file B and file A because now it is formed at a higher level because it has both the information kind of a framework. So based upon the labels, you will say that who is capable of reading, who is capable of writing, you should be able to do that kind of a framework. And so now the basic thing in these constructs has been the notion of a you can include some kind of a, a program as well as a specifications or annotation and statically check whether they satisfy the constraints similar to what we did in the certification of the programs and generate an executable program and then from that you would get labels and the data it can take it and execute the output. The input is also labeled. The crucial point is the label. So label means based upon the label, I should be able to say who are the appropriate readers and who are the appropriate uh, writers, which essentially means this label keep track of both confidentiality as well as integrity. And so now there are uh, lots of drawbacks. I will not go into this one. We will come back to a, a later point. Now I will give you the RWFA model for the first time. Try to understand. Uh, carefully. So now the security requirements of all practical applications are often stated easily in terms of who can read and write information. So what does that mean? Confidentiality corresponds to a set of who are all the persons who can authorizedly read and similarly the integrity corresponds to who are all the persons who can write. If more persons write, integrity is less. If nobody can write, that information cannot be changed. Now you would say that it is high integrity data because nobody else can change it. I can assure you because nobody else has been able to change it. Then I can say then it is integrity. For example, in a black box, after the, this one, nobody would have written it. And that is how you would say this data is something is authenticated because nobody else is able to write only whatever it was then has been recorded up to that point and subsequently nothing has happened and that is why integrity plays a role. So now let us use some notations. Now what would that mean by information which is readable by S1 and S2 that means that both S1 and S2 can flow to information readable by only S1 naturally because it is readable by S1 and S2 the information is also readable only by S1. There is no problem. And similarly, information which is writable by S1 can flow to information that is writable by both S1 and S2 because it has been written by S1 and S2. Now, the which can be written only by S2 can also flow uh, to the uh, subjects uh, which are uh, the union of S1 and S2. So, no readers and writers can be used as labels. So, this is the crucial point. Now in all the other things what we saw, these could have been treated as a, a syntactic labels. That means that I can say this is blue and this is pink. And now what am I moving? I am moving in to see that the labels themselves really capture who are all the readers and who are all the possible writers. I would call the test. That means that all of them may need may not have written but at least they have the capacity or capability or authorization to write and that is how I can treat them itself as a label. So that means that if somebody wants to say whether this much of confidentiality has been uh, satisfied and then you have to uh, see that who are all the readers what uh, who have been able to read it 
and then I can say that if that one falls into this, then it means the person who has read it, that means that the, if you say that this person should not have read it, and if you come to the point there is a label in which he can read it, that means that confidentiality is no longer guaranteed. Similarly, if you find in the writer set, another writer who has written, now you say that he, this person should not have written, and if it comes to the point to say that he has written, then it essentially means integrity cannot be as specified, is not guaranteed kind of a framework. Using these labels, now we can say under what conditions the information can flow from one to another kind of a framework or the other. <coughs> so, now let us now uh, see how the labels can be formatted. So, now the first one which is a triple which is consists of the owner. That means if he is a subject or a process, I should know I am the principal, I am the owner, I have given uh, authorization for these persons to read and these persons to write. So, which essentially means this gives a set of readers and this gives the set of uh, writers. So, if it is a process, I would call that as a owner, in which case I call that as a subject. And if it is a just an object, that means a passive thing, then I would say it has this authority. That is using this authority, this has come into the a picture. So, which essentially means the first component is a single subject, which denotes owner in the case of an object label, authority in the case of a subject label. Because uh, when you say it is a subject, it is with authority I am executing, like if a process is executing uh, like in a kernel, I know that at what level this process is getting executed, who are all the persons who can read and who are all the persons who can write kind of a framework. So, now the second component is a set of subjects denoting permissible readers in case of an object label, subjects who can read all the objects that this uh, uh, subject can read in case of a subject label. So, similarly, the third component is a set of subjects that denote the permissible writers in case of an object label. So, subjects who can write all the objects that this subject can write in case of a subject label. Note that in the third component, what is important is even though you have writers, let us say W1, W2, W3, it is not necessary that all the persons have already written, which essentially means that these persons could have influenced it kind of a framework. And so now let us say uh, what are all the flows in such a system we can permit. What does that mean? Now if you are given two uh, the uh, classes in the RWFM, let us say it is RW1 where the first authority or the owner is S1 and then the reader set is R1 and then W1. So, that means that this is the label for this object uh, RW1 uh, in the uh, RWFM model. And now, if you consider RW2 with the label S2, R2, comma W2, now and uh, what it means is that information is allowed to flow from RW1 to RW2. That means that I want to say under what conditions the information can flow from uh, S1 to RW1 to RW2. Like what we were saying when I say X equal to E, if the flow of information is possible from E to X, the class of E must be a lower compared to X. In, in other words, X must be higher than the levels that occur on the right hand side kind of a framework. So, now it means that R1, what does that mean? Information is flowing from RW1 to RW2. So, uh, RW2, that means the direction of flow is RW1 to RW2. What does that mean? Now, you, you it is denoted as you saw that RW1 is less than or equal to RW2 in the lattice only if R1 is a superset of R2. What does that mean? R1 is already uh, now uh, is a superset of R2 and W1 is a subset of W2. What does that indicate? Uh, is that all the uh, persons. So, now R1 must be a superset of R2. What does that convey? That means that R1 contains all the readers of R2. That means that 
information if it flows from R1 to R2, because R2 is already contained in S1, there is no confidentiality that is going to be changed. And now I am saying W1 is less than or equal to W2. That means the persons who have influenced this subject is W1. The number of persons who have written are less than or that equal to W2. And hence, now I would say that RW1 is less than or equal to W2. And so the number of writers on the first one, that is integrity, is a higher one. And this is contained in this kind of a framework. Under this condition, I can be sure that no confidentiality is going to be changed. And so that is how you have R1 greater than or equal to R2. Now W1 is less than or equal to W2. That means integrity is maintained. And this says that the confidentiality is maintained. Now I can say this information can flow. So which essentially means like the, uh, uh, the LUB and the GLB, what we computed, this essentially corresponds to one is the uh, join and the other one uh, is the mean that is given by S1, R1, W1, uh, LUB, S2, R2, W2, which means you take the intersection of R1 and R2, that means which are the ones which are common and then union W1, union W2 and similarly for the GLB, you take the dual which essentially means you take the union of the readers and the intersection of the writers. And so now you can say the relation less than or equal to as defined is reflexive and transitive and forms a, a pre-order and now it becomes a, a pre-lattice. So now we can say now under what conditions using this lattice we can say it forms a real uh, flow model so that all the uh, necessary uh, uh, conditions of confidentiality and integrity are going to be a maintained kind of a, a framework or the other. So now here, what does that mean? You have given a RWFM, let us say what are the uh, functions, so which essentially you have a triple. So now the first one is the owner second is the reader set and W is the a third set is kind of a framework and now you obtain, you usually ignore the labeling for lambda when clear from the context for a subject, yes, usually it denoted of E of S is equal to yes kind of a, a framework. And so now let us come what would be the way the transformation can happen. So a state of an information system is defined as the set of subjects and objects together with their labels and the initial state. Objects and their labels as required for the application. And now in the uh, initialization, each subject starts with a label S, yes, that is the owner, and then anyone can read it and nobody can write it. That means it, integrity is being maintained and now it is a public one so that anyone can read it. So now whenever the transformation takes place, now what is the thing that happens? What are all the possible operations with reference to which we can decide what are all the transitions that are possible? Naturally read. I want to read some information. That is the flow of information comes into the picture. Another one is write. That means I am going to write. So when I am writing an object oriented program like even a C++ or Java, I am going to create a process. Now what is the label for this with reference to the process which creates this process becomes important. And as I mentioned downgrade, under what conditions downgrade can be permitted? That is under what conditions the owner of an object can he uh, can downgrade it so that the whole protocol or whole uh, system can become useful kind of a framework. Another natural one is often you want to relay, relabel them for varieties of reasons under what conditions relabel so that the new label does not give a conflict with any of the existing labels. Now let us look at under what conditions a subject which has a label S1, R1, W1. What does that mean? S1 is the subject, R1 is the set of readers, W1 is the set of writers and request read access to an object O with the label S2, R2, W2. That means that in the, it's an object 
and this is a subject that means information is flowing from subject to object because the subjects want to read an object. So that means that it acquires more information. So now under what conditions this can be doing? So naturally the S1, the subject should be capable of reading uh, this uh, should be in the uh, reader set. That means that the owner of this object must have given access uh, to uh, the S1 uh, in this set. That means confidentiality is ascertained. So if S1 belongs to R2, then you can relabel S yes to S1, comma R1 intersection R2. That means the joint, the common readers between this and this. And then because it has gone up the level, the number of readers who can read the new one are only the ones which are common to both this subject as well as this uh, object. And now you would say that that's what it means by S1 can read the object. That's what it says. And now you say S has access information that is accessible only by the common members of R1 and R2 because then they because the information has gone up. Now it's only those persons who are common to both R1 and R2 set can read it. So confidentiality is going to be maintained. And then the writers, it, it is going to tell the new object that has been there has been written by more people. That is integrity is less. That is confidentiality has gone up. Integrity has come down because that is the dual operations as we saw in the BLP model and the BBA model. So that means S is influenced by both W1 and W2. And now uh, if that one is satisfied, then you are going to give an allow access. That means that allow access means it is here you are discreetly given the access to say you can now access the resources. Now it could be the case a possible state change can happen. That means the label of yes may also change for the subject. So now let us consider the other operation which is right, which is given by again. Now if you consider the subject S1, comma R1, comma W1, it requests a right access to an object which is given by S2, comma R2, comma W2. So under what conditions this can write? So which means the first one says S1 must be in the writer set of W2. That means this is the subject. And now if I go here, it must be there in the W2 as well. That means integrity is being maintained. And then R1 is a super set of R2. That means confidentiality is going to be maintained without any problem. So all subjects that can access information in O can access information, yes, ha that has accessed so far. So confidentiality is not uh, uh, being leaked out kind of a framework. Then what does that the next one mean? All subjects that have influenced the current information of yes can also influence uh, O and that is how you have uh, tried to say that W1 is a subset of W2 and so now one can write it because S1 is already there in W2 naturally W1 has been W2 kind of a framework that I can assure the integrity is also being satisfied. If this condition is not satisfied then I will say you cannot access it and there will be naturally no state change if the uh, access is a denied kind of a frame. And so now if I want to create an object, naturally if a subject yes, if there is a subject yes with the label yes comma r comma w and request the creation of an object o and now you can create an object o and label it by the same labels yes, the number of readers who have read and now for writers you will also create because you are creating another another object which means that this object also is included in this because this is the one which has created it and that means that this is also the writer of this object. So which essentially means that S comma R comma W union S. Note that in this triple S comma R comma W it is not necessary S should be contained in W. It may put only a read only information as far as it one is concerned. So that means that there is a definite state change because a new object is added to the a system. And so now the next one which is the important thing which is the downgrading or the declassification. So now what is it you are given? You are given a subject S with label S1, R1, W1 
it requests an object O with label S2, R2, W2 and now this subject S can downgrade an object with the label to another label S3, R3, W3 provided all the following conditions are satisfied. Note that owner must be the same. That means it is only the owner who can declassify the object. Only for generality I have put S1, S2, S3 and that is how in the condition you would say S1 equal to S2 equal to S3 though later one can give some kind of a hierarchy if he is at a higher level can he do. But for simplicity it is always good to say the subject who is the owner he is the only person who would be able to downgrade it kind of a, a framework. So, what are the conditions? S1 can read uh, object O. That means there is no confidentiality uh, has been lost. And now the all the subjects are the same. That is the subject who wants to downgrade is actually the owner. And then what does this say? W1 equal to W2 is equal to W3. That means that the S and O that means all the persons that you have influenced must be exactly the same kind of a framework. And what is the other conditions R1 must be equal to R2 that means that what was the earlier one it requests an object O with an R2 R1 must be the same as R2. So, there is nothing change in the confidentiality of the information and the further conditions are R3 which is the new one must be higher than R2 right because that is what we want to add another reader. So, that that is what it means by downgrade means who cannot read has been added and so that is how you would say that R3 is a super set of R2 that means with the object O now I am adding some readers with the way R3 minus R2 that means the new reader must at least be included in W2. What does that mean? I can downgrade it uh, that means I can allow only readers who were not allowed provided they were only they were at least the writer. If they were already readers there is no problem because they can read it. It is only if they are writers then that means they have influenced it and then I can downgrade it to them. So, which essentially means that I can downgrade the owner can downgrade an object provided they he is uh, provide to the set of all objects who have influenced them and nobody else kind of a, a framework because now there is a possible uh, state change that can happen that means label of O may change kind of a framework. So, now this is what the uh, conditions what is it and downgrading or declassifying which means that for all practical applications adding readers to the result of a computation is essential for use by relevant parties as I gave the example of a password example in the downgrading rules only the owner of information may downgrade it. If a single source is responsible for the information then readers can be added in an unrestricted manner. That means that I am the only owner who is responsible for the information then I can go on adding because if you are the owner and you are nobody else has influenced you are free to add anyone to the readers corresponding to the point initially I will give uh, for example, if I give you a letter slide I say that I do not put all the students and can read it I make it as public kind of a, a framework. If multiple sources influence the information then only those who influenced may be added as reader and that is where the problem comes into the a picture a kind of a framework. So, at this point I will stop. In the next class I will take an example to show that how RWFM overcomes many of the problems. We will take couple of examples to see how we can label it etc. Uh, any questions? Okay, thank you.